Hello my dear. In the last video, the casting process of the blank roller is explained. I remember that you had some questions. Yes. You said that after casting, the blank roller is machined to obtain the final specification. I wonder how long specialized machines for roller machining have been around. The development of roller machining technology dates back to the second half of the 19th century, when engineering firms began designing and building machines specifically for this purpose. So, are modern rollers still processed the same way? The principles remain, but today's machining is done using state-of-the-art equipment from some of the world's leading manufacturers. These machines transform raw castings into precision-engineered, high-performance tools. The process begins with turning, where the outer rough layer results from casting is removed. This is a crucial preparation step before the final machining. I imagine cutting such hard materials isn't easy. What kind of tools are used? You're absolutely right. The extreme surface hardness of rollers requires specialized cutting tools capable of withstanding immense machining forces. Even the chips produced during cutting provide experts with insights into the hardness and toughness of the material. These rollers are massive. Are regular lathes and grinders enough to handle them? Not just any machines. These colossal rollers are processed using state-of-the-art CNC-controlled lathes and grinding machines, renowned for their precision. Despite their size, machining is performed with micron-level accuracy, down to thousandths of a millimeter. That level of precision for such heavy components is surprising. It might seem excessive at first, but when you consider that these rollers shape products requiring extreme dimensional accuracy, the meticulous machining process makes perfect sense. What ensures that every roller meets these high standards? Final grinding plays a crucial role. Rollers must meet tight tolerances, with roundness deviations of less than 2 microns and cylindricity within plus or minus 1 micron over a length of 1,000 millimeters. Every step is monitored through various quality control methods, from traditional micrometer measurements to roundness testing, indentation depth analysis, and surface hardness checks using Vickers hardness testers. With such strict machining tolerances, I assume quality control is just as rigorous? A roller is probably one of the most thoroughly tested and inspected products in the metal industry. Every measured value is documented, becoming a permanent part of the roller's history. How smooth can the surface get? For applications like foil rolling, the surface roughness must be exceptionally low, often below RA 0.02 microns. This level of precision ensures flawless rolling performance. That's incredibly precise. What other testing methods are used? Beyond standard inspections, manufacturers also use ultrasonic testing, a technique widely known from medical imaging. It helps detect internal flaws, ensuring the roller meets the highest quality standards before it reaches production lines. So, after all these inspections, is there anything else left to check? Yes. Let's take a look inside the laboratories. Metallurgists analyze the samples taken from the molten metal using advanced laboratory techniques. Is this just for quality control? Partly, but it goes beyond that. These in-depth examinations not only ensure quality, but also help refine and further develop the roller as a high-tech product. Do all rollers look the same after manufacturing? Not at all. Just as rollers have different applications, their surfaces, shapes, and finishing processes vary widely. What kind of differences are we talking about? For example, some rollers undergo surface texturing, where their surfaces are roughened using laser spots. Others receive specialized surface treatments, like precision machine profiles for specific industrial applications. Is machining only focused on the working surface of the roller? Not at all. While the working surface is critical, other parts, such as the roller shafts and axle sections, demand just as much attention, effort, and precision. Why are these sections so important? These areas ensure the roller's stability, accurate rotation, and reliable power transmission. Precise drilling and milling in these end sections allow for a secure connection to the drive system.
What about rollers with steel shafts? How are they attached? For example, gray cast iron rollers are fitted with steel shafts while still warm after heat treatment. Once cooled, it contracts around the shaft, creating a permanent, inseparable unit. In some cases, steel shafts are cooled to minus 65 degrees Celsius before being press-fitted into the cast roller body, ensuring a tight and lasting connection. It sounds like roller designs keep evolving. Will there ever be a limit? Not likely. As industries push for innovation, roller designs will continue to evolve, meeting new challenges and shaping the future of manufacturing. Every innovation brings new challenges and that means new rollers to match. After exploring the manufacturing process of rollers, let's take a look at their role in everyday industrial applications. Railway tracks, tread plates, and profiled sheets for roofs, walls, and ceilings would not exist without profile rollers. For decades, rollers have been essential in shaping profiles, bars, wires, and sheets. Layered rollers, heated hollow rollers, and calendaring rollers are crucial in paper production and plastic film manufacturing. In fact, there is hardly any industry that does not rely on rollers in some way, whether for processing plastic sheets, food production, or automotive manufacturing. The automotive, railway, shipbuilding, and aerospace industries all depend on rolled materials. Even the rails and wheels of trains owe their shape to rollers. Leonardo da Vinci's idea of using rollers as a manufacturing tool was truly groundbreaking. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Al Jazari channel for more deep dives into the world of engineering. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of engineering.